before the start of the Russian offensive, Belarus allowed Russian armed forces to perform weeks-long military drills on its territory. However, the Russian troops did not exit the country after the drills ended. Minsk allowed Moscow to stage a part of the invasion from its territory, giving Russia the shortest possible land route to Ukraine's capital, Kiev. In the initial days of the war, Russian forces used Belarus as a staging post for which it called for what it calls a special military operation in Ukraine. Russia sent troops and equipment into northern Ukraine from bases in Belarus. Now, as Moscow is escalating its offensive in Ukrainian cities by launching missile strikes across the country, Belarus has announced a new military link-up with Russian forces. Minsk says the regional grouping of forces is purely defensive. Belarus Defense Minister Viktor Krenin emphasized on Tuesday that all activities being carried out at the moment were aimed at providing sufficient response to actions near its borders. Earlier on Monday, Belarusian President Alexander Lukashenko announced that the two, lead, the two neighbors have deployed forces together. He said the formation of these troops coincided with the attack on the Crimean Bridge. However, he did not specify where the forces were deployed. The basis of this grouping, like I always said, is the army, the armed forces of the Republic of Belarus. I must inform you that the creation of this grouping has begun. It's been going on for two days, I think. I ordered to start forming this grouping. Belarus has an army of 60,000 troops. The deployment has raised fears that Belarusian troops could join Russian forces in their mission to capture and hold territory in East Ukraine. However, the head of Belarus's Security Council said these concerns were unwarranted and that Western countries were considering attacking Belarus on that pretext. More recently, Kiev accused Russia of launching drones from Belarus that targeted several cities in Ukraine and claimed at least 19 lives. Addressing the G7, Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky said Russia is trying to directly draw Belarus into the war. He even called for an international monitoring mission on the Belarus border. For more on that developing story, we're now joined by Lieutenant Colonel Daniel L. Davis. He is a senior fellow and military expert for defense priorities. We're also joined by Dr. Anna Matviva, who is a visiting senior research fellow at the research at the Russia Institute at King's College London. Thanks to both of you for joining us. But Lieutenant Colonel uh, Davis, if I could begin with you, sir. There are now fears that Belarusian troops could join Russian forces in their mission to capture and hold territory in East Ukraine, given the repeated threats being issued by Lukashenko to Kiev. That could significantly escalate the conflict. What explains the growing belligerence of the Belarusian president, and why now? Well, you know, what I really think is, is what's going on here is that probably uh, Putin is looking for anything he can to distract uh, Ukrainian uh, forces on just his forces. And I think he wants them to start now paying attention to their northern border up there. But, uh, you know, when you actually look at the military balance, the, the uh, Belarusian military is not very good, actually. There are maybe 15,000, 20,000 actually ground fighters, and they are equipped with equipment that's even older than what uh, the Ukrainian side had at the beginning. And Maybe they've achieved a few others, but I'm not sure there's that much of a real military threat. In fact, Lukashenko himself only said that at this point there's maybe a thousand in this joint force and that more would come. But I think primarily it's it's to distract Ukraine from uh, thinking that pushing troops further down into the into the Donbass or maybe even into the Kherson region, making them think that they have to be concerned again about a new incursion into the north, which is not entirely uh, out of reason because you russia has been moving forces in there but i don't know that it's going to include uh, ukrainian or belarusian forces but of course we're going to have to wait and see include belarusian forces but like i said threats seem to be uh, issued currently on a daily basis by the belarusian president who's used some very tough language in fact against kiev and uh, the ukrainian president now kiev has accused russia of launching drones from belarus which targeted several cities in ukraine and while addressing the g7 summit virtually today the ukrainian president zelensky said Russia is trying to directly draw Belarus into the war. He has now called for an international monitoring mission on the Belarus border. Clearly, Kiev is quite concerned about the possible role that Belarus could play 
in all of this? How concerned do you think the West would be on this count? And are efforts being made to talk Lukashenko down, even though, of course, he is uh, a trusted Putin ally? Uh, I, I'm sorry, I thought you, you're talking to me. Yeah, I, yes. yeah, I do think it's concerning. Even, even if Belarus doesn't have that good of a military, even if this is uh, just to distract Kiev, if the things escalate and Putin decides that, hey, I'm going to put pressure on Lukashenko because he's, you know, he saved him basically in 2020 from internal disputes and may think he owes him now. And if he sends that down there, then now that you've escalated outside the borders, and now that you have the potential of maybe Poland going into Belarus is to help out their their friend uh, in Ukraine, you know, under the pretext this is not an Article 5 situation, you know, it's just a, a bilateral situation, but you never know where those things could lead. So anything that it escalates this war beyond the Ukraine border is a real concern for the West. Well, a real concern for the West because we certainly do not need to see an escalation of this conflict. We've already seen with those missile strikes, Putin has upped the ante and then there are those constant nuclear threats that are issued by the Russian president. And remember, U.S. President Joe Biden himself has said Putin is not joking about his nuclear threats. We'll have to wait and see how things pan out in the days and weeks ahead. Thanks very much, Lieutenant Colonel Davis, for joining us and sharing with us your perspective on that big and developing story. Let's now go across to Dr. Anna Matviva, who is also with us. Uh, Ma'am, the Belarusian president has said he's ordered troops to be deployed along with Russian forces near Ukraine. In response to what he says, is a clear threat to Belarus from Kiev and its backers in the West. In fact, he's used very strong language, saying strikes on the territory of Belarus are not just being discussed in Ukraine today, they're being planned. Their owners are pushing them to start a war against Belarus to drag us there. Even though he has offered absolutely no evidence to back his claims, does this indicate a potential escalation of the war in Ukraine? And what explains Lukashenko's growing belligerence at this point, like I just asked? This is apparently changing rules of engagement around a uh, Ukraine conflict. Uh, there have been some kind of informal rules, how much uh, the war is allowed to spread, in the territory of uh, Ukraine and, um, and what the sides kind of could and could not do against each other. What we have seen in the last few days is that these rules of engagements are maybe changing and uh, the voice spreading to new height and maybe new players and new territories. So the tension, uh, the level of tension is rising and Belarus is a crucial piece in that because Belarus has been used and is being used as one of the linchpin of the um, Russian operations in Ukraine. There has been already a commitment to have a regional secure, uh, military security grouping in Belarus. So that's not something completely new. We are talking more about uh, beefing up this grouping. Lukashenko has not said how much, but he also said that uh, Belarus, uh, the troops from Belarus are not going to participate in the operations in Ukraine. So he, on one level, he demonstrated his political loyalty to President Putin. He made it look like it's actually very formidable. At the same time, he qualified by the statement that Belarus is not going to really directly participate in the war. All right, so Lukashenko there, in a sense, displaying his loyalty to Putin. He's also said a warning was delivered to Belarus through unofficial channels that Ukraine planned Crimean Bridge 2. Again, no details offered. And he goes on to say, tell the president of Ukraine and the other lunatics, if they touch one meter of our territory, then the Crimean Bridge will seem to them like a walk in the park. Now, these sound like outright threats to Ukraine. We know the Russian forces use Belarus as a staging post for their 20 24th February invasion of Ukraine, many would say Belarus has always been on the side of Russia and now that the world is worried about whether Moscow could deploy tactical nuclear weapons, isn't this belligerence by the Belarusian, Belar Bel Belarusian president only likely to add fuel to the raging inferno? 
this is something which is much more political than, uh, than having actual tangible military strategic content. Belarus is a country of around 9 million. Uh, Ukraine is a country of 40 plus million. It has a large army. If um, a Russian president would, I sincerely believe that is not going to happen, but if it will be serious talk about using nuclear weapons, certainly it will be something which would not involve Belarus. Belarus cannot tangibly uh, threaten Ukraine, but President Lukashenko needs to manage his domestic public. And the war in Ukraine is unpopular in Belarus. So he needs to maintain that kind of discourse that, yes, Belarus is threatened by Ukraine. They can do really terrible things to us. That's why we have to be belligerent. That's why we, we need to stand strong for our borders. We need to demonstrate to them that they cannot move an inch into our territory. So what we see as um, uh, threatening rhetorics, in reality, is some kind of, a, um, a kind of uh, effect, trying to achieve an effect of railing around the flag among his own public, which is far from convinced that things are going in the right direction. Well, many would argue that this sounds like irresponsible rhetoric on part of the Belarusian president at a time when the entire international community is asking for a de-escalation of this conflict. I mean, do we really need this kind of rhetoric and these threats being issued on a daily basis? On that note, Lieutenant Colonel Davis and Dr. Anna Matviva, thank you so much for joining us and sharing uh, with you on your perspective on that big and developing story. We'll have to wait and see what role Belarus does in fact play in the days ahead in this conflict.